what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Talk Box. Check it out. You need to like, subscribe. Come on. YouTube family, YouTube world, I am back with another special edition of the DOA playlist. Um, you know, when when you know there's special things that happens happens in the fam bam, you know, I want to treat it like special, give it special attention. So before we get started, please go like, subscribe to the page, um, leave your comments. Please go like and subscribe to the page. Let me know how you're feeling it. Let me know if there's anything you want to see different. Uh, what I could do, whatever, you know, leave your comments. But today, I got this dude. This dude just popped in. <laughs> uh, Y'all know who he is. This is my little brother. Uh, he already has the episode on the DOA playlist. If you get a chance, go check that out, right? Go check out Big Mike's episode on on the playlist, all right? So, um, and then you can, we we going to talk about something completely different than that. But you got to hear his story, because his story is amazing, and I'm just happy and proud of him, glad he's here with me uh, in the studio, been trying to make this happen for a minute, but, yeah. you know, when you become a rock star status, you know, you can't, <laughs> oh, man. You know, when, you become, <laughs> when you become a rock star status, you know, you got, you got two different, three different, four different artists you're working with, <laughs> it's hard, you know what I'm saying? It's hard, man. It's rough at the bottom, bro. It's, uh, rough, it's, it's rough at the bottom, bro. <laughs> I know I'm down here with you. Yeah, I get <laughs> I'm controlling crying. What's up, little bro? What's up, big bro? What's happening, man? Yes, glad you're here, man. Man, me too, man. Man, dude. Yeah. Um, um, this was last minute job. Just kind of like want to get him in here, talk about some of the things that he's doing. Uh, he just came off a big show. We're gonna talk about that, um, but let's let's just kind of recap, Mike. Um, how long ago? How long? How, how many years has it has it been since you left Sacramento and moved to LA? Almost ten. I moved at the end of twenty fifteen. So end of twenty fifteen. Yeah. So getting close to nine. Yeah. 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 And um, I'll tell y'all, you know, you know, the, the story goes like this. You know, Mike is kind of like the baby bloomer in the family. I mean, he came into business, you know, um, really, really late. I mean, he's just really new as a guitar player, um, um, as a producer, and, uh, you know, coming up, yeah. you know, he, 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 he got his ass beat. <laughs> you ain't lying. He got his ass beat. Because um, I think he was thinking that, you know, I was going to give it to him. I think he was thinking his brother G1 was just going to give it to him. He, I think he was thinking his brother Joe Archie was just going to give it to him. But mm -hmm. his his brother, um, you know, his brother Ivan Johnson, he just, I think he was just thinking everybody was going to give it to him. He didn't know that he had to work for it. Mm -hmm. And we made him work, y'all. We made him work. Um, um, but it's a lot of sacrifices, a yeah. lot of. Yeah. He put a lot of time, a lot of hard work in and, um, you know, paid a lot of dues, you know, even from the time he left Sacramento going to L.A., uh, paid a lot of dues in such a short period of time. Mike would come and uh, after school and he would like walk in the with, with raining, with cold heat, he would walk up to the studio that um, our late brother, Ryan Porter, that we got a shout out, our, our late brother, uh, his, uh, he would come up to Brian's studio and we would be working with Brian and, or I'd be working and Mike would bring his cassette or CD. Or... <laughs> it might have been a cassette, D. I yeah, think I had yeah. a little task cam for Oh, four, yeah. Yeah, a little four track yeah. task cam, man. And he would let us hear the music yeah. and me and Brian would just be like this. Uh, it sound bad because they was on them Dollar Tree tapes. They weren't <laughs> even like no real, like no Sony. They were no, nah, there you no, can go, no you can walk to the Dollar Tree. TDKs. Yeah, little TDKs, man. Yeah, little like... TDKs, man. <laughs> they were just on tape. Yeah, and they only let you record on one side. Typically, you can flip the tape yeah, over, man. man. But yeah. And we would send him home. I would send him home all the time, all the time. Man. But going through all of that, what he what he did was he did the work, 
and uh, he got good real fast. And um, eventually he made the move. He made the sacrifice. He up and left. Um, he up and left everything at home and and moved to L.A. and chased a dream. And um, man, got down there. It wasn't it? Was, it wasn't it wasn't easy for you? Man. No, right? that's, man. It was it was tough. I wasn't down there three months before I was ready to come back. Yeah. What little money I had saved, I was ready to come on back, man. And you know, yeah. but stayed and. Another big bro, um, Big Funk. Yeah, you know, was a huge part of of you know putting me in position to be able to stay down there, man. By hooking me up with my first first gig and all that, man. So it's the it's the band of brothers, man, that allowed me to to continue, you know, stay down. There, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. And uh, and the struggle was real while you was down there. Listen, man. Talk a little bit about the struggle. Man, the struggle. Struggle was real. I mean, you know, without any real work, I didn't have a car, so I wasn't able to like do a bunch of jam sessions because you know Ubers and Lyfts were expensive. Um, I lived in Pasadena with my cousin, and uh, you know everything was in North Hollywood. So you know in LA, you already thirty to thirty-five minutes apart from city to city on top of traffic. Ubers and Lyfts prices be crazy. Um, so, you know, in between just trying to hustle and do what I could, you know, I would eat some frosting, uh, if that was available, um, whenever my cousin would leave and go Orange County, man, I would be at the crib solo, you know, I didn't want to call you or call my mom or my sister. So I would just thug it out. And a lot of times it would be that, that good old buttercream that would, you know, stick to my ribs <laughs> for a couple of hours and hold it down or, you know, you might get a some some uh, top ramen. You know what I mean? Little little chicken flavor, shrimp flavor, noodle a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's fine dining, man. Where I'm from, I don't know. You know, shrimp, man. That's fine dining. Oh my gosh! Me. Oh, my but then eventually, <laughs> then eventually, you Mike moved on up and got his own studio. Yeah. And um, was living in the studio for a while, but he fixed the studio up. You know, really, really nice. <laughs> no, I don't know about the first one, D. The well, first one, <laughs> yeah, well, no, well, the first one was. It looked nice. It looked nice. So you walked in it. <laughs> hey, D. So look, look. I'm gonna be quick with this story. I, I, I had my studio spot that I was living in. I, I sent some pictures to D. I'm like, D. This look good, man. You know, and mind you, the studio came fitted with carpet on the walls and the floors, almost on the ceiling. So I went to Home Depot with, with with whatever little money I had, and I bought the the pergo wood floor, and I just laid it over the carpet, and then installed it properly. But it wasn't fitted to the dimensions of the room, so some of the little wood planks was overlapping. So when D made it down, finally he walked in, like brother, it's nice. But as soon as he stepped in the doorway, he realized it was some un it was an uneven playing field. <laughs> And then, then, and then I had like some some Walmart rugs. It was the 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 runner rugs that you put in your hallway, man, to cover up the gaps. That's that that's what it was. The some some of them had oh they overlaid, and the steps was uneven. And then some parts it was just gaps in between the wood, and you didn't know if you were stepping on the pergo or the carpet. But it looked nice. If you just, you know, that's why they say don't touch stuff. Just look at it. Don't put your hand, you know. Oh, you can't go in that room. I almost died, man. I almost died. Yeah, man. I said, do you crazy? He, he still got my ankle brace right now. <laughs> Yo, man, that's oh, crazy. Oh, man. But then finally, man, you, you know, and then that was a struggle living in there. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I learned, this is why you guys, please go watch the, uh, his episode mm -hmm. on, uh, on a DOA playlist, the Big Mike story. There's things during that conversation that I think myself, his family didn't know. I learned, his mom learned, uncles learned, yeah. um, that we didn't, nobody knew. And it's just, I'm not gonna give it up because I'm gonna go move on to something else, but please go watch this dude's story. And then eventually you moved and got a beautiful studio where you are now. Yeah. Um, but it was the grind, man. It was mm -hmm. the, it was the, None of it was was easy, right? It was it was yeah. you know 
Yeah. It was the come up. It was the hustle. It was uh, yeah, for sure. It was the work. You you put the work in. You did yeah. the work, and then you know. But Mike was ready. He was he was ready, and then finally, um, you know, here comes. Uh, Kenny Lattimore yeah. comes working with DJ Quick. Yeah, Quick. Yeah, yeah working with DJ G1. Quick. It's a big shout out to Lil Brudge G1 for that. Yeah. Um, you, with you and Buddy Bangs. Yes. Yeah. Then came Productions, and then yeah. Then came uh, then came the Kim gig, and then came mm-hmm. uh, you know all kinds of stuff. Man, started. Yeah. I don't know what order, but then you know Boney, Boney now, and yeah. and Joe and yeah. MD and Joe, and just yeah. uh, so many, so many th- different things. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of things, man. Yeah, you know, a lot of things, man. But the struggle is necessary because I think the the learning curve that that came with all of that, yeah, you know, really set me up to be able to efficiently do what we're doing now. Yeah, none of it would have, you know, been as uh, effective and knowledgeable and you know how we put things we're doing now with the my own stuff you yeah. know without having to be in those positions to learn how to md you know outside of the things i learned here but now they throw you into the big pool yeah now you in the big pool you take off your floaties man and and you got to sink or swim yeah you know what i mean and, and ain't nobody there to baby you in la ain't yeah. nobody there that's right it's a, you know, coddle you, man. It's, you know, it's, it's grown men. Everybody got the same kind of bills. So you, you gotta, you gotta turn up your, your focus, man, and, and your, your willpower to survive. And all those situations and all those great artists, man, just were a part of the preparation process to do. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll, I'll never forget, you know, Mike used to get, he used to get discouraged. He'd call me and he would just get discouraged because his phone wasn't ringing and, when he would try to, you know, he would try to walk up and talk to people and, and uh, you know, just to try to just make some contacts and relationships. So I, I told him, I said, listen, man, don't be discouraged. I said, a lot of people, you know, if they can't see it, they're not going to believe it. You know, once they start seeing something, seeing once you start bringing some results and then watch what happens. I said, that's going to turn for you, man. And, and, uh, and eventually, you know, uh, eventually it, it did. I mean, once people start to see you, you know, doing things, mm-hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> because like you said, everybody's got their own thing, man. Everybody's in LA. It's just, it's just a thing. Everybody's grinding, yeah. man. So you have to kind of make your own way. And then finally, once they started seeing you and seeing your name, I think, I don't know what led to it, but then everybody started to come up to you and, and respect the fact that, you know, they really started to respect the fact that you was my little brother. Yeah, cause... Uh, hey, I, hey, hey, look, I was about to say, yeah, you know, I'm I'm MOA. You know, I'm, uh, you know, DOA. <laughs> oh, you from South? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call me MOA. Oh, well, you must be good. <laughs> you, you must be half decent if you DOA, little brother. You further down the alphabet, you M, but you, you made the cut. Let me hear them out a little bit. Oh, they man. started to see a little something, man. man. So. so, yeah, man. So, all of that, man, led to where we are yeah. today. Um, you uh been doing, talk about, talk a little bit about what you've been doing with your solo career your solo stuff oh uh man right now i've just been you know over the last probably two years or so coming off uh, a few tours with boney james um you know i've been able to develop a fan base within his and touring and start to build my own um you know network of people man who you know they come to the shows and they they come as boney fans and they learn about me and they leave big Mike Hart fans. And so that really put a uh, fire in under me because everybody's asking me, well, where's your music? You know, what are you doing, man? And in the move uh, in the last nine years, I've been more of a producer driven, uh, in a producer driven headspace. Um, but it really, you know, lit a fire to get back into the artist side as a smooth jazz person because that's where the demand um, and the response was coming from. So that just put me in the headspace, man, me and the team, Buddy, Buddy Bangs and uh, Brandon Harris, uh, to really start focusing in on the opportunity, you know, to capitalize on, you know, where I'm really thriving at, man. And we started working on records and, you know, developing things that, you know, um, I have written, you know, during the struggle. 
the circle back, you know, that's another thing, man. You know, don't throw away, you know, things that you might have worked on. Because some of these records for this project were byproducts of the first album, the Young Man Old Soul album. Um, <clears throat> so that I started in 2015, that circle back that made the cut for this new project, man. So we just started working and uh, start developing records, man. And then we came out with this crazy single that I sent you and you was like, well, bro, you got one. And uh, I was like, you think so, bro? You said, just do do this one thing, you know, you know, send it over and, and see if he'll be a part. But it's so strong by itself, man, that, you know, it's going to go either way. And sure enough, man, listen, you know, he's a producer, he's an NR, he's an exec. He 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 got the ear and the and the experience to to say, Yeah, and they little bro, I don't know what <laughs> that nah you got one. And uh it, he he never fails, man, at that stuff, man. So you weren't lying, man, you know. I didn't think it was gonna I knew it was great, but you know, you never know the how people will receive it, especially because that record is a little on the edge it's a little right. it's not as you know format fitting as the other amazing records that are out there right it's just a little you know got a little grease a little right. Right. little, little hop on it where's well, my phone oh, uh, let's 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 stop talking let's stop talking uh, about it okay and let's let's play a little bit of it yeah I'm so y'all can see then we'll get back to it and we're gonna sh play a little taste a little taste a little teaspoon just a little bit. Just a little teaspoonful yeah. and then We'll talk about the results, right? Absolutely. Now let's check y'all check out the Big Mike's first single. Yeah. Cigar Lounge. Yeah. Check it out. Let's rock it. Shout out to your other mentor, to your other big brother out yeah, there, to Mr. Yeah. Greg Curtis. Man, OG, I'd like to call The him. phenomenal Greg Curtis. Curtis. We yeah. salute you, brother, man. Man, Duh. that's my dog right there. So, so listen, man, listen. The idea was to go to, when he sent me the record, the idea was, I, I knew the record was a hit. I said, but man, if you... Get Boney James on this record. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it solidifies everything. I just think I hear him on it, and you know, and it was it worked great. You know, now you go from producing a record with Boney, but being on tour, traveling the world with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You know, y'all, then you've been all over, man. Yeah. You know, you've traveled traveling the world, bro, to producing a song with him, right, on his mm -hmm. album, right. Yeah, yeah. Now he's featuring on your project. Yeah. Right. And you guys make a masterpiece where well, you make a masterpiece with you and Greg and, mm -hmm. and you know, and it turned into something special, though. Yeah. It turned into something special. In fact, <clears throat> I'm going to show y'all what it turned into for Big Mike. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. That's the number one. That's the number one right there, y'all. That look good. Don't they? That nice. Man, number one record. Number one record. Cigar Lounge. Cigar Lounge. For three weeks. Yeah. Number one. You know. That's crazy. Brother. That's crazy. Hey, man. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you, brother. A brother. number one single. Now, yeah. that's a number one record, man. So, them checks are going to be looking <laughs> nice and juicy. How you say your mailbox is gonna, <laughs> gonna be leaning? It's gonna be leaning a little bit. Mike, Mike, Mike gonna look out and he gonna look out and see his mailbox kind of leaning. Lean a little bit. Say, man, that's that's a couple of them checks sitting in your mailbox, brother. 
man, this, man, I'm proud of you, man. The Thank whole you, city, bro. your family, yeah, uh, you know, your Zuri, Dumb, Shay, man. everybody yeah. proud of you, man. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, number one record, first time out, y'all. Yeah. Um, and he did this. He did this. Um, uh, man, I, I, I'm just speechless, man. And and we're so proud of you. And we're not. We're not done. See, you hear what I'm saying? We're not done. Like, like this, like this. You know what I'm saying? Well, 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 well listen. I don't know if you, you know. It, it says his name. It's got you my know, name. It, because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to have a record without having all of my influences and my mentors and foundation apart. So, although I, when I wrote the record, I laid the bass line down, and he was like, "Man, your bass is good." I said, "No, it ain't." It may it's written cool, but it ain't. It need the secret sauce. <laughs> I think I can play like D, and I, I'd be full of myself sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I needed D to play bass on this record, and he, he allowed me to play uh, bass on. I wasn't gonna play. Trust me, his the bass track that he laid was 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 smacking. But I'm glad I played on it, man, because I like my name on it. Like that. <laughs> That's right. It's cool, man. That's, thank you, sir. Yeah, man. It's Although right. I ain't getting them checks like. Whoa. That. <laughs> But, but I take it. I take it. I take it. I take it. Take it. <laughs> man, I'm so proud of you, man. Thank but you, man. but we're not done yet. No. Not done at all. Yeah. Because, you know, we just dropped a new record. Yeah, yeah, man. What's the new record called? New record's called Penthouse Suite. Oh, man, that's something special. I see I see you creating a theme. Yeah. Around everything you're doing, man. Yeah. I've been kind of watching your, your social media and everything. It's like yeah. you got you got a you got a concept going. Yeah, man. You know, it's crazy, man. Like I like cool sounding stuff. You know, when I see titles, man, the name I think has to attract me before I even like hear the record because it makes an intrigue and it makes you. It's like the title of a book or whatever. You see something, you like. Well, what is that about? Or, you know, in a world of all the songs that are dropped day in and day out, <clears throat> how could I stand out, you know, just from a title, just by somebody reading it, you know, and I want to grab you from the beginning. And Cigar Lounge, that record just felt smoky. I don't smoke cigars, uh, but it just felt oaky and smoky and cool. And I can see somebody with a little glass and a little, little stogie and, and that's on the, you know, on the turntable, table, chilling. Mike, it, it's crazy. Well, you know what? Listen, mm -hmm. hold on. While, while, while I got it, let, you know, let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. You you little, little, little teaspoon. Little we'll take teaspoon. you on the elevator we'll up to the penthouse. There you go. Let's take more. Here you go. Penthouse sweet, y'all. Check this out. I had, to, I had to play the intro, man. Man, listen. I had to play. I had to give him a little bit of that intro, bro. Now, this is you're doing. Look, it was crazy. You know, when it comes to smooth jazz, Mike, mm -hmm. you you living on the edge. You breaking rules, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. kind of breaking them smooth jazz rules, dog. Break them up. You breaking rules, man. You 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 committing crimes because you know smooth jazz sonically. Yeah. It, you know, people it, it's, it's supposed to be a certain way, mm -hmm. but bruh, you putting some. Grease and some stank and some doo doo, doo 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 on smooth jazz, bro. What, what's that about? Man. And and they're loving it because this record been the most added record since it can come out. Absolutely, you're yeah. on a, you're on your way to another number one record. Yeah. We're gonna put it out there. He's on was on his way to another yeah. number one record. Yeah. They're killing the record right now. Yeah, but that intro, man, man, I I wanted to. Uh... I wanted to 
push the envelope, man. You know, you know me, B. I'm always listening to Bobby Womack or, you know, some sort of classic record, man, that has real ingredients. Ain't no AI, ain't no none of this. It's the soul of people in, 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 in the DNA of the records I like to vibe on. And that's what I wanted to do, man. You know, when I hear records like that, man, I think of composers that you introduced me to. Like I said, you know, Bobby, Isaac Hayes, and Barry White, man, and, you know, those kind of people, man, who had live strings, orchestral moments in their records, man, and I wanted to do that. And, you know, we work on string arrangements all the time, man. You, uh, or you work on them, I tell you my vision, I, I can't work. I be hearing it, man, but D know how to make it make sense. Same thing with Big Bro Joe. Oh yeah, you know, Absolutely. you know yeah. Greg as well, man. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to do something where I sent it to my big bros and and I made them proud. I was like, man, you know, and shout out to you know a goat in our in our uh, circle, Eddie M, because you guys worked on a record uh, that's coming out that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, I heard the strings. And what Eddie said, man, you guys did live strings on this record. And he talked about who he worked with, you know, the great Nicole Neely uh, out there with her team in Nashville. You guys connected me with her. And uh, I just told her my vision, man. And she wrote this incredible intro arrangement, man, that I was just like, you know, I set her examples and told her what I wanted it to feel like and, you know, emotionally invoke and man listen when i say she knocked it out the park you know she sent it to me dog and i was like oh man felt like a disney movie it felt like a fairy tale wow and, you know so yeah brother that record is in man cigar lounge i was like we listened to the record yeah 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 like, cigar lounge didn't want to listen to the rest of the record yeah and i said you got a strong record, but you know, you, you gotta come, we gotta come, you know, you gotta come with that next single. A and R, I'm not I'm not <laughs> lying. D said, man, you got a lot of great stuff on this project, man. But you need one more record to tie. Because the Garlands was the only song on the album that sounded like that. Yeah. That had that texture. Yeah. You know, all the records are banging, but it was a standout record because it, it just had a different feel. And he was like, you got to connect the dots, little bro. Just, and I was hesitant because because I've been in my creative mode and I when I work on stuff, I move on to the next thing. You know, I don't stay in the same place or try, try not to. But, but D was like, bro, just, you know, hear me out. And I said, okay, bro. And, Pit House Sweet was literally like a last edition record to the project. And it was just something where I just happened to start an idea. Uh, it was a late night, me and Brandon were working. I had a drum loop and Brandon came in and he said, throw that away. <laughs> he said, man, he was like, man, what you programming? It was just a drum that I just had some drum samples programmed, a little pattern. And he was like, man, let's call it a night, man. He delete that. He said, that's trash. <laughs> he literally said, it's trash. Came back the next day. Luckily, I didn't delete it. I opened up the session. He, he was working in his studio, Studio B. And then we, uh, I just started writing chords around the drum loop. Ended up writing the structure and the foundation of the record. He came in. He was like, what is that? So that's the drum beat from yesterday. That's what you was working on. Now, soon, as soon as he heard, he was like, "You know, I got to play live." On that thing, right? <laughs> he said, "He said, I said, no, nah, man. I said this because I really did like what the program drums were doing, and they were programmed live." Uh, but he was like, "Nah, bro, you are, that's gonna be a single. I know you got to take the drums out. <laughs> you know, we got to really record on that, man. And you know, sure enough, man, here we are, Penthouse Suite." Crazy production, man, from the, 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 like you said, the texture of the record, the yeah. horn arrangements, the yeah. strings, this record. Shout out to Derek Williams in Nashville. Yeah. I work with a lot of Nashville uh, amazing talent, man, and uh, Derek Williams, uh, saxophonist and arranger, and Sam Morell on trumpet, man. Those two, they are 
That was those are my my go tos, man. So shout out to Nashville, New bruh, York City, bruh. Great, great record. I I have no no doubt that this record is going to is going to be a number one record for you, bro. Another yeah. number one record, yeah. two for two. I two see. We're going to call it right now, two for two. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not going to hold you much longer, but all of this stuff, man, that you've been doing, you know, with the buzz that this record has been on the charts mm -hmm. for, I don't know, 30 weeks plus. I don't know. How, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cigar Lounge has been on the yeah. charts for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, by you, because you also, you know, just recently, um, you were doing Joe. You were yes. MD for Joe. For, mm -hmm. what, how, for how long were you MD uh, for? Like two and a half years. So you, man, you're like, you know, doing Joe, you're doing Boney. I mean, dude, you're, you're, you're traveling. You're, you're, mm -hmm. everybody knowing your brand, everybody seeing and knowing about Big Mike. And now with this number one record with Cigar Lounge, your phone's been ringing, bro. You've been getting yeah. calls. You just finished. You just got back. Yeah. From your first solo, yeah. uh, was it a it was cruise festival? Uh, festival, festival, man. So talk a little yeah. bit about that, man, yeah. and talk about because um, this was your first one. Was my first one, yeah. As your as a solo as a artist, solo artist, man, crazy. Wow, crazy, Damn. man. So so I got a call or I got an email um, shortly after uh, the tour with Joe and Tamir ended, uh, almost immediately after, honestly. It was a crazy guy's timer, man. Um, we got an email from uh, the Richmond Jazz and Music Festival that Joe had performed in last year, um, Boney the year before that. So it's so crazy. It's a very reputable and huge music festival. Um, and they asked me if I would be a part of it. They wanted to book me. Cigar Lounge is on the charts. It's popping. And they wanted me to be a part of the festival, man. So that I think I got the email in the May or whatever, fast forward to this past weekend, August uh, 11th, and I take the whole squad, I got a full, full band, um, you know, I wanted to go in, you know, guns blazing, man, and do it the right way, took my team over there, and man, Richmond showed me so much love, uh, and it was a full circle moment because um, I was third uh, on the bill for that that stage, and I was on the they call it uh, the lover stage, and it was the the main stage of the festival, and it was me, Andre Day, um, Monica, and Ludacris. So I'm looking at the lineup. Um, I had never worked with Andre Day, but I just came back overseas with Joe and Monica doing Wembley Arena, wow. one of the most iconic music venues wow. ever. Um, that big bro grace the stage with Lionel Richie and it's on <laughs> on on video. No 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 But you know the it's come full circle with that and you know I, I work with with I call him Chris you know but I work with Luda. Um, you know so we got to to hang and bond for a little bit at the festival, but to you know get that call and the grace of that stage and then to get an even bigger surprise earlier that day. I'm in my hotel room, chilling, uh, practicing, and I get a call from management about uh, the great, the icon, hip hop pioneer, Wyclef, who had performed Saturday, August 10th. He performed uh, the wow. day before, um, asking, hey, do you know Wyclef? I said, yeah, I know who he is, but I don't know him personally. He said, hey, he just reached out uh, and asked, could he rock with you? I said, he reached out to who? Oh, the festival people reached out to us. His team his team reached out to them. Yeah. And I'm like, he want to play with me? <laughs> <laughs> he don't know why he want to play with me. <laughs> so they was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. do you, is it a yes or no? We got to let it. I said, hell yeah. Why Cliff? <laughs> So they don't know what we can do. Wait, wait. And then I actually had a perfect moment in the show where I was doing a record called uh, Hybrid, Hybrid yeah. yeah, which is a hip hop jazz uh, record. Shout out to Buddy Banks who just knocked that production out the park. Um, yeah, man. And I was like, man, that's one of my favorite records to perform. And I already do some hip hop hooks in there. And then here we go. I sent it to Wyclef. He's a professional. We met backstage. And then we went on stage, man, and it was just organic. It was like we knew each other. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. Man, that's crazy, man. Y'all got to go, please. Check out Big Mike's story on the playlist because we go deep into the story. Mm -hmm. And now to see what's happening for him now, just see how God be working, man, how he does his thing. And um, and it gets better and better. White Cliff, I'm watching Lil Bruh, White Cliff, and, you know, on this big stage mm -hmm. that he played the past couple of years with, with Joe and Boney. Now he's doing his own solo thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it don't get no bigger than that, y'all. Yeah. It, get so, it, get, it don't get no bigger than that. And uh, and I got to throw mention something. He talking about Wembley. Yeah, he did the Wembley Arena. But, you know, I did the Wembley Please. Arena and the O2. And, so so he got a long way to go still. So wait, wait, wait. I did O2? He, he no, always no, tried to no, keep... No, I no, no. I, I did the, the, 80, the 100,000. Yeah, you yeah. Know, with, with the Rolling Stones and... Oh, let him play. I hey, play there. Hey, so hey, tell hey. Junior he got a little bit more work to do. <laughs> hey, see, big bro here. I'm, I'm here. I'm still playing. I see he talking about he at the bottom of the mountain. I told see, he at the top. I'm at the bottom. Yeah, you know, he's talking about, yeah, big bro, praise the day. We, I'm, 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 I did what he did. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, anyway, so I'm back. I'm back. But let me ask you one more question yeah. before we go. What's up? How? Why was it important for you? Because I notice a lot of artists mm -hmm. will, if they got to go to a different city, they'll hire a band with inside yeah. that city, right? Yeah. You know, like a makeshift band. They'll yeah. send the band to music and they're the artists and they'll do a sound check or maybe not even rehearse at all. Or... Right, right, right. Why was it important to you, Mike? Because you got paid very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got paid very well for the gig. Yeah. But you also invested. You didn't use that money for yourself. You used right. that money to invest in bringing your whole band yeah. and 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 making sure that mm -hmm. you had what you needed. You you flew your band to L.A. Y'all rehearsed in L.A. Yeah. You know you invested that money wisely. Mm -hmm. You took care of your band. Yeah. Took care of the expenses. I mean, you're the executive now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where where you could have just hired a band and. And, and where you were and gave them $300 a piece or right, right, right. $200 or $400, whatever they make, yeah. $500, yeah. right? Not knocking it, not knocking it, yeah. but you could have saved a lot of money. Sure. Right. Why, why was it important? You felt it was important for you to do it that way versus using a band. And do you think two part question, do you mm -hmm. think had you use that band a band, local band, mm -hmm. do you think the results would have been the same? In other words, because Wycliffe has made you an offer that so deep, and we're not going to get it, we're not going to talk about it, right. but he's made you an offer, you and your band, yeah, yeah, that you, yeah. you, 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 you're you definitely not going to refuse it. Right. Do right. you think, had you done it the other way, the results would have been the same? Or why, tell me why you, why it was important for you to do it the way you did it. Um. Well, I think, you know, Number one, it was branding and making sure that the representation of the music that is excellent on record was the same in a live setting. Uh, you know, I've been on all these festivals and I've seen amazing artists um, not be represented well, all from a decision to use, you know, or cut a corner um, just to use a local band. Um, but the chemistry you can't buy, you know? So sharing a stage with people that you have a relationship with um, on stage and off stage, um, all that shines through when you're playing music together. Um, there's a different care, there's a different uh, attentiveness um, to execution and delivery. And for me, I wanted to, you know, and, and I've been blessed to have the experience to uh, only know that for these past couple of years. To be, you know, be on stage as man where I'm playing with the same guys, or you know, we have the same sound engineers, same playback, so on and so forth. So for me, I didn't want to do anything out of the norm, and I feel like the people deserve the best version of the music. That's what they deserve, man, and they're not gonna get it if I hook up with somebody at sound check that I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So rather than save a couple of dollars on hotels or flights. And just use, you know, some local talent that I'm sure is great, but you know, it needs to be uh, the chemistry. I gotta rock with people 
And so having a rehearsal to execute, to detail, to make sure everybody's on point. So when we hit that downbeat, those paying consumers get their money's worth. And the music gets represented the way it is, the same way we put in the hours when we created it. And I wanted to make sure, man, that I stood out from every other opening act, from every other uh, person that, you know, is in my same field that I'm, you know, you know, following footsteps. I wanted them to have a headliner show. I wanted them to feel like we need to bring Big Mike back and he need to be a little closer to the nighttime show. He need to be because he just delivered us, you know, something, man, that was amazing. And they, they asked for more. It was an encore afterwards, man. They wanted more. So, you know, to, to hear those, you know, fans say, oh, one more song. And, and then to see somebody like a Wyclef who's worked with everybody and anybody say he want, he Googled me and he wants to, he loves my energy. And then we go up there as two professionals and execute. I couldn't have done that with a band that I didn't know. That's, you know, that opportunity could have been squandered all because I said, I want to save a couple of dollars. Instead, I said, I want to represent the Big Mike Hart brand the best way possible. And then here we are, man. So, um, and it's the two part, no, it wouldn't have been, uh, I, I think I answered it in a way, but to just touch on it, it wouldn't have been the same. You know, the music wouldn't have been played because I, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, I've seen people be upset with the fact that their music, you know, wasn't played well. This person didn't learn, you know, the, the part, the bass player is not playing the right part or, you know, well, you know, at 200 $300, you know, they're not as uh, invested in caring about, you know, they're giving you a $200, $300 performance. You get what you paid for, man. And, uh, you know, I like the best. So. Man, brother, I can't tell you, man, how I'm so proud of you, man. Just uh, watching you from where you come from, you just, you know, just the growth and everything, yeah. man. And just seeing what's happening now. Getting ready for another world tour with Boney. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, man, shout out to Boney and everybody in the band, Smitty and and um, uh, Amari and and who else is in the band and uh, 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 Jonathan, and Jonathan and Javance and yeah, 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 all yeah. you brothers, man. And yeah, uh, just shout out to you guys, man. But man, I'm really proud of what you're doing. Um, uh, you know, in your success, man. I think the whole city is, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mike became a little Hollywood on everybody, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. You know, he, he it's all, it's all. It's, Have my people uh, get with your people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, D had to call management to get this interview. I had to call management. <laughs> I had to call management. Oh, man. I, yeah, I had to call management to get him over here. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man, you know what I'm saying? No, man. Pilots, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, man. But no, man, just your growth, your production. Yes, sir. Brother, your production stuff that we got going together. Yeah. Uh, you know, production with you, you know, Buddy Bangs. And, yes, sir. And, man, and, and 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 shout out to El Nicole and everybody that we're doing. It's everything yeah. that we've been doing, man. I'm yeah. just really proud of you guys, man. And, um, the records are sounding incredible, man. man yeah. You know, the records are sounding incredible. Your the phone is ringing now. A lot of these people come into your studio, mm -hmm. and they put their records. They play their records, and they hear your records. And they say, "Mike, I need you to produce my record. I need you to produce yeah, my record." Know, be like, and, <laughs> it don't I, sound the same. If, if my record don't sound like that, Mike, I need I need a record. Man, that's going to be happening for you. It's happening now. Yeah. Yeah. And um. Uh, man, continue success, man. And, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, I just, I just can't tell you, man, how watching this in real time, I get to kick back and watch and be a fan. And, um, and I'm, you know, really, really, uh, proud of you, man. You know, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, you as a father, man, you're doing your thing and, yeah. and, uh, you know, that, 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 I know that's special to you as well. And, um. Uh, just very, just happy for you, man. You know, yeah. and I really appreciate you taking out some time. I know you're down here for a special occasion, but I'm glad you came through. Yeah. And uh, so we could, uh, you know, chop it up and, and talk about it a little bit, man. Anything else you want to say before we get out of here, bro? Oh, man, I just appreciate you, bro. I'm grateful and thankful, man. I'm so happy your platform 
uh, from the playlist to, to Boogie Wednesdays, man. Oh, man. You know, D has become, uh, D was anti-social everything. You know, <laughs> he, D, yeah. So to see him step into the, this cyber world and not just, you know, do the interview space, but to turn into the base. He was already the base guru, but he was a myth. Because everybody didn't know they had the, you know, you had the YouTube, the the, the black cat video, and then and, and that's all they had. But now they get the CD go through all the bass lines and all the iconic uh, uh, licks and, and tips, man. They get to see him do it, man. And can't none of y'all play it like him. I'm gonna say it. There's only one DOA, and, and it's another MOA. <laughs> so well, well, well I, let me let me say this: if there was one. If there was one, there was nothing good about, about, about the shutdown, about COVID. Nothing good about it. Um, but because the world shut down, I had no choice. Yeah. I mean, I had no choice, man, because I had to work. I yeah. had to yeah. I had to interview. I had to do sessions. I had yeah. to do. So I had no choice but to be a part of Cyber World, guys. I, when, when everything shut down for two and a half, three years, whatever it was, I had no choice. So I was, I was forced into this thing. This wasn't voluntary. Just like <laughs> I was forced into it. Man, listen, man. Tell everybody how they can reach you, bro. Man, please follow me on all social media handles at Big Mike two nine eight seven and BigMikeHeart.com. dot com. I let your boy. You guys go out, download Cigar Lounge, yeah. download Penthouse Suite, yeah. support the records. You know, buy the records. Just don't just listen to the music. Buy, it. support the music. Get the music. Yeah. Um. The records are winning anyway. Um, you know, this brother, he, he don't even realize, he don't even know what that mailbox gonna be looking like here in the next <laughs> next couple of months. He don't he don't even realize. I just it, yeah, he don't even he don't have no idea. It's, just, it's one thing to play on it, but when you like when you when you got records that you produce, that's <laughs> and, and wrote, yeah. it's a whole nother thing, man. I can't wait. Man, it's a whole other thing, man. So because yeah. you, these records are being played on the radio, yeah. big radio, man. Yeah. Like, man, I'm yeah. so proud of you, man. Thank brother. You, Rick we all are, man. Everybody in the right. family, everybody in the yes, family, sir. man. Everybody in the brotherhood, everybody in the church. Yes, <laughs> Lord. Yes. Yeah. Hey, y'all, go like, subscribe to the playlist. Um, um, you know, go follow. Like I said, leave some comments. Leave your your critiques. You can critique me. You know you, you can criticize. You think I can do better? Let me know. Can't hurt my feelings. Well, you can. You can hurt my feelings. Just be nice. Be nice about it. And I'll try to you know try to do it better next time. All right. Oh, that's fine. All right. So until next time, y'all show your love right here, my little brother, none other than Big Mike Hart Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Love you, boy. Love you, too, bitch. Oh. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah.